Today we are going to take a look at the new Cintiq 16. First up, Wacom lent it to me for a month of testing and to give you my honest thoughts about it. So the question is, will I miss it after sending it back? Let's find out. So far when it came to Cintiqs, the cheapest one was the Cintiq 13 HD. And by cheap, we are still talking about $900. I bought it 4 years ago and it took quite a while for me to save enough money for it. Nowadays you might get them for $799, but the new generation with a retail price of $649 might be the cheapest Cintiq I've seen so far. In comparison of course, after all it's Wacom we are talking about. It's also slightly bigger than the 13 HD. All this puts it closer to the range of prices from competitors like Gaoman and Huyun. So what is this Cintiq about? The Cintiq 16 is a drawing tablet with a full HD LCD screen that works with your computer. So you will either need a Windows PC or an Apple computer. In higher leagues you will find monitor tablets like the Mobile Studio Pro, which is its own computer running Windows. But that just as a side note, because sometimes it can get confusing. So since the Cintiq basically acts like a second display and the pen as a mouse with pressure sensitivity, you can use it to do pretty much anything you want on your computer. That means virtually any software works with it. Yes, even note taking and OSU. But most importantly you can fire up Photoshop, Xi, Clip Studio, Krita or GIMP. Whatever you feel comfortable drawing and painting with. I only tested it on a desktop computer running Windows 10, but Wacom also provides drivers for Mac. So how do we connect it? That's where this weird looking cable comes into play. One end is plugged into the back of the Cintiq like this, after which you can close the cover to hide it. Which is nice, because with the old generation that specific connection was exposed and always felt a bit dangerous. The other end splits into three different plugs, HDMI, USB and the power cable which connects to yet another adapter. The HDMI and USB connectors go into your computer to transmit the video signal and the pen input. The cable is just long enough for if you have a computer under your desk, so don't plan to work on your couch across the room. After installing the drivers and turning it on, we can start using it. Either by mirroring what the computer shows or by extending the display. This can be set in the Windows or Mac display settings, as you would do with any other display. Before we start drawing, let's take a look at the device itself. It's 43 by 29 centimeters or 17 by 11 and a half inches with a considerable bezel, which isn't the worst thing because you need some space for your hand if you're working near the edge. You can angle the whole device using the mini stands at the back, but unfortunately that gives you only two options, flat or angled at 19 degrees. The previous Cintiq 13 HD came with an extra stand, which while a little flimsy sometimes, it gave you the option of four different angles. While in my opinion it seems a little bit bulkier than the previous generation, I think the size of the Cintiq 16 hits a sweet spot, where it's large enough for good detail work but not too large that every line needs big hand or arm movements. It also doesn't take up your whole workspace, considering that you'll probably want to use it with a keyboard. That is because the Cintiq 16 unfortunately comes without any express keys, which is a bit of a struggle if you're used to those. At the front you will find exactly one button, on and off. Personally, I'm used to a keyboard even with express keys, but at least with often used shortcuts like Ctrl Z or zoom in and out, express keys make your work easier. It seems like a weird omission, considering that most of the cost of the Cintiq 16 will be the screen and input surface. Since they are going for a more affordable device than their previous Cintiqs, I'll chalk this one up to price bucketing. So if you're interested in getting a Cintiq, don't say goodbye to your keyboard just yet. Or get the Express Key Remote, but that will cost you an extra $100. Later we'll take a look at the Express menu, which remedies the missing Express Keys at least a little bit. Speaking of keys, let's inspect the pen. First up, the pen is the same one that would also come with a Mobile Studio Pro, which is an improvement compared to the previous generation of Cintiq 13 HD. As it's common with Wacom, it's wireless and you don't need to charge it. It features the typical two keys, which are reachable by your thumb or index finger. There's also an eraser at the opposite end of the drawing nib. The nibs can be replaced and the Cintiq comes with a number of replacement nibs. Right here on the side, where there's a little ribbon to rest your pen in, there's a little storage for the nibs. But now, let's draw with it. Before we get into the details, here's my overall impression. As I said, I've been using a Cintiq 13 HD for a few years now, so that's where I come from. Overall, I really enjoy working with it. It is a bit thicker than my old Cintiq and the frame is made of harder plastic. The fact that it has a slightly bigger screen and the cable is not plugged in on the side but secured on the back side gives you more of the feel and look of a solid and proper workstation. 
I always had to be very careful when storing the older version, since there was always that fear of damaging the connection with the wrong motion. Anyway, painting and doing brush strokes overall is very pleasant with this one. The colors look quite decent as well as the brightness. It's really hard to say anything other than it just performs as expected, which is great considering the cheaper price. So if the lower price isn't really noticeable with the performance, where's the catch? Well, there are some aspects that are definitely different or missing. There are no real gimmicks to it, as for example the pen case that came with the older generation. Also the previously mentioned express keys and the adjustable stand were some nice features that are now missing. So what you get is what you need to work with, in other words, you get the game and the DLC costs extra. Now to some things that are pretty normal with monitor tablets, but I wanted to address them so you get a better image. There is a little bit of latency, but it's barely noticeable. Here you can see it in real time and then slowed down to half speed. With the stabilizer set to zero, you can see how the cursor follows the pen nib with a bit of delay. Again, it's not much and if you work with a stabilized brush, you'll get the extra latency anyway. The pressure sensitivity feels and behaves just like I'm used to. So you'll need a bit of practice to control what the pen offers you, but the range between soft and hard pressure is pretty broad and very usable. Another thing you'll have to deal with on a tablet with a screen is the parallax, which is the result of the space between the outer layer of the screen and the display layer. Similar to the latency, it is noticeable if you look from the side, but from the top, in your usual viewing position, you won't really have to readjust to it. Let's talk about the display itself really quick. The maximum resolution is 1920 by 1080 so it's your regular HD resolution at a diagonal length of 16 inch. The screen brightness and temperature can be adjusted in the driver settings. One more thing, this is not a touch screen so it only works with the pen. Speaking of which, the pen it comes with is the Wacom Pro Pen 2 which features 8192 levels of pressure sensitivity. This is a huge improvement compared to the pen that came with the Cintiq 13 HD that only had 2048 levels of sensitivity. Some of you will also be happy to hear that it also responds to tilting if the software you use supports that feature. Of course you can map any shortcut to the buttons on the pen. By default one of the buttons is mapped to right click while the other one opens the express menu. This opens a circular menu with customizable commands. Since the circle always opens where your pen is, you will need to do minimal movement to select your command. Still, you will need to press a button, move the pen, tap it on the screen to achieve the same thing as Ctrl Z for undo. This menu has acted very sluggish from time to time, taking about a second to open and after issuing the command another second to close. But this seems to have been fixed with the latest driver update. Again my recommendation is to get used to your keyboard shortcuts and only use the menu for things like the tablet setting menu. If you've ever used a Wacom tablet, the settings menu will be very familiar to you. You can adjust how the pen responds to pressure with the typical settings like which area of the screen the pen covers or what the pen keys should do. In typical Wacom fashion, you can set up the pen or additional express keys to respond differently depending on which software is in focus. Before I come to the conclusion, here's one more thing that I've always had issues with concerning drawing tablets in general. Whenever I've tried to install more than one tablet at a time, those drivers started to conflict with each other. One computer we tested the Cintiq 16 on had a bamboo tablet installed, which stopped working properly afterwards. It's incredibly annoying, especially since it has been that way for as long as I can remember. You might be lucky and not have this issue, but it is my personal experience. So whom can I recommend this? I think it's obvious that Wacom are reacting to the many companies who have released graphics tablets with screens that are cheaper than the original Cintiq line. So as I am used to Wacom products, it is nice to see them take a step in the direction of becoming more affordable, with fewer features, but keeping the quality consistent. And don't get me wrong, by being the cheapest Wacom Cintiq, $650 are still an investment after all, and there are still cheaper alternatives. But if you've had troubles with those, or you want to go with a known brand, this might be something you want to check out. Nowadays, more and more people grow up on touch screens and things like the iPad that can be used for drawing. And from the comments on my previous review, I've learned that the concept of a classic screenless tablet seems foreign to a lot of people. So fair enough, the interest for drawing tablets with a screen is larger than ever. So if you see yourself drawing for a long time, want a solid working tablet and you can deal with a slightly reduced feature set like missing express keys, then you'll be having fun with this thing. Overall, it's a great entry point to monitor tablets. If you've enjoyed the video, hit the like button. And if you've got questions, post them in the comments. If you're interested in my art, check out one of these videos right here. Thank you for watching.